Hello everyone, it's Akatrius here and I welcome you to this new video and today I have a little Christmas present to you guys and I hope you appreciate it because this is what I've been asking uh, what I've been asked for for a long long time which is my uh, if you want to see this I hope it's the right deck now yes my Crystron deck so I have been making a lot of Crystron videos in the past for which is a lot for me all right and I've been asked by multiple people uh, to help them with their decks um, to look at their deck lists and stuff and tell them a bit about the Crystron archetype how it's played and stuff so today I want to answer not only the ones who asked to which I already answered before you ask I want to ask answer to everyone by making a Crystron deck profile and explaining my thoughts on each card and tell you why certain cards are played and certain cards are just not played. I hope you appreciate this video, I'm not really good in this type of video, but I hope you will, you'll be appreciating it so I can kind of see where we are going with this. I cannot tell you uh, how long this video will be, you already see it. so. Yeah, but I can't tell myself, so I just jump right in before I talk for 20 to 30 minutes, which can definitely happen. All right, let's start with a uh, with a deck rundown. We've got two Crystron Salfafnir, one Quick Draw Synchron, two Go for the Bla Hazy Shadow, one Rosenix, three Fistburn, three Smiger, three Scrap Recycler, one Crystron Rion, one Praziorlo, three C3. 2 Max C, one Quan, uh, 2 Quan, and 2 Effect Veilers monsters. For the spells, we've got an Upstart, Terraforming, Foolish Burial, a Twin Twister, a, a Divinity, uh, a Different Dimension Deep Sea Trench, and 2 Starlight Junctions. Ever Trap, we've got 1 Entry to 3 Impact, and 2 Sudden Strike. And yeah, that wraps up the main deck. In the Exo deck, we've got 1 Zulkin, a Stardust Warrior, a Crystal and Glion Gander. Trishula, Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon, Psyframe Omega, Black Rose Moonlight Dragon, Normal Black Rose Dragon, Powered Insectron, 2 Armatrix, 2 Quandex, 1 Infinity, and 1 Nova. So, this is the uh, setup I go for my personal Crystron deck. And I've been through a lot of versions of this deck, and this just works best for me as a player, as Akatrios. This is by no means the perfect list. And this does by no means say that you have to run this exact list to be successful with the deck. There are many different builds you can check out, so please don't take this as the standard, as the ideal thing. Because this is also a deck list which was influenced by my playstyle. So with this out of the way, let's talk about the cards. So first off I want to talk about the very most important card of this entire deck, which is Crystron Salfafnir. Because you might most likely expect that I am running 3 of them, but I was always just running 2. Here's the reason why. Crystron Salfafnir is the strongest card of the deck, yes. It is, it is the playmaker, the main card you want to get all the time, and it's just basically the best card. It's, I cannot describe it without best so, just take that. Uh, Crystal Salfafnir, for those who don't know, has the ability to discard a Crystal monster except Crystal Salfafnir and Special Summon itself into Defense Mode from a hand or graveyard. So, that's a thing. And if he Special Summons himself that way, you have to destroy one card you control. But, his second effect says if this card, so if Salfafnir is destroyed, if it was in a field prior to that. By a card effect or by battle. You can special summon one crystal monster from a deck in defense position. So basically, you can. Uh, basically, one sub Fafnir and a crystal card on your hand is any crystal monster on your field. So, this is the perfect setup because it does not use up your normal summon and basically fills your graveyard with more. Um, more stuff to work with because all the other non-tuner crystals have graveyard effects. So this is a very good thing. However, you cannot discard Crystron Salfafnir to summon another Crystron Salfafnir. And that is where my doubts come in. That is my that is where my um, decision came to only run two of them because I don't wanna brick. 
I really do not want to break and this deck already excels at it before you actually uh, run 3 South Fafnir. So I just want to reduce my amount of breaking by cutting a card, no matter how useful it is, but if it can break so hard at 3, I just run 2 of them. It's not like we can just dump it with 3 uh, scrap recyclers, which is why I'm, uh, and Foolish Burial, or we can just sur search it with Fistburn. So that is a thing. We've got enough wrestlers to go for the South Fafnir, so why don't why don't we just play two of them to to reduce our brick percentage? Quick draw synchronous is just a little uh, is just a little tech. Like you can discard South Fafnir to special summon quick, uh, quick draw synchron, and you basically didn't go any minus. So this is basically just a plus because Crystal South Fafnir on the graveyard is the same thing as Crystal South Fafnir on the hand. So that's a good thing. You can go for both Infinity and Soul Come first, so it's alright. To go for mostly for the Omega. I know that is kinda strange to hear, but go for is for once not mainly used to summon Zolkin. Zolkin is mainly summoned by Quick Draw Synchron. I know that's crazy guys, but bear with me. Go for is mainly there for the first turn um, Omega because Omega is such a good card in this deck. So you go special summon uh, Gofu, in the best case scenario, normal sun scrap recycler, dump anything you need and just roll with that. You can basically go still go for the um, for the Cyphram Lord Omega plus Gliding Dunder combo, which is always a great thing. And yeah, it opens a lot of plays because you've got the Omega on your board, you got the scrap recycler, in the best case scenario, to dump something. And you just have a very, very good setup, which can, which takes a bit of skill to be broken. So that is a good thing. Free scrap recyclers, for, uh, by the way, are a given. You do never want to run less than free. Or if you do, you want to run free Gen X Undyne, but I'm going into that later. So yeah, free scrap recyclers is a given, so is one foolish burial. This is set. Before you actually throw in any Crystron cards, throw in free scrap recycler and foolish burial. Believe me guys, this is way too important. For the Crystron monster setup, it's kinda normal. Two Quan, you can run one if you want. Free C3, it's always mandatory. Add one Rion at Fortunas, one Preziol because you only need it for the Glyne Gander combo. Free Smiger, free Fistburn and one Rosenex because Rosenex is by, by far the worst crystal monster. <laughs> it is by far the wor worst crystal monster, you cannot deny it. It has its uses slow, so I still run it, but it is really much the worst crystal monster. I said it thrice now, so it's right. So there we go. For the other main deck, uh, for other monster decks, I've got two Veilers and two Maxi because this deck's main um, Main objective is to apply pressure to the opponent to disrupt his plays and to make him kind of suffer during his own turn. So Maxi kind of exactly does that. You pressure your opponent by hindering him to uh, special summon excessively because they know you can disrupt their turn anyways and Maxi is just a s simply a very good card against most decks because most decks special summon so much and with Tristram's ability to just disrupt their plays Another um, a Maxi just adds to the pressure you're already putting on them. So basically, the opponent has to decide if they want to play through your disruptions and let you draw a lot of cards, or if they just end it and you can uh, play further and um, prepare another disruption. So yeah, and Vela is just the thing you want to draw with Maxi most likely because Vela can just uh, easily disrupt uh, your opponent by going. Practically minus one because you discarded, but it's all right because your opponent goes minus as well, so it evens out somewhere. So that's the monster ratio. It's pretty simple actually. For the spells, it's it's clear that we need one upstart Gotlim in this deck. I am not a fan of upstart Gotlim in the slightest, but Tristron is so dependent on its combos that even I can find a spare place to uh, fit the Goblin in and play it because I want to draw my combo pieces to uh, set up the disruptions, so that's a thing. One terraforming simply because Star Starlight Junction is an amazingly good card and we need it, 
we don't need it every duel though. So we don't need to run like the ABC ratio 3-3 three, three, or the other ratios which are 1-3 are with 1 being the terraforming of course or something. We can go with 1-2 because well that's practically 3 Starlight Junctions in the deck but if we would run 3 Starlight Junctions directly in the deck you can actually brick them more uh, than if you just play one terraforming that can search it out. So that's a thing. The Foolish Barriers are given, Twin Twister is given, Avidity is a given. Different Dimension Deep Sea Trench is a very great card in this deck because it opens up a lot of combos. For those who don't know, you can read the effect right there, it's really not that long. Um, and if you read through that effect, you will basically see why it's good. If not, Remember that all the non-tuner crystal monsters pop cards on the field to do something. Crystal self if he is summoned, and the other non-tuners to summon a crystal tuner from the deck. So I think now at least now you got it. It's an amazingly good card. And yeah, now onto the star Starlight Junction. I don't know what I have to say about that card really. It is so amazing in the deck because the main thing you do is synchro summoning in the opponent's turn. That is the main thing you do. And this play so much with it. You can also go for quick draw synchron by attributing a tuner, which is an effect I use quite some time actually. And yeah, that's a great thing. And I already hear people asking me a certain question. What about Crystallic Potential? Crystallic Potential is by no means a bad card. You, I mean, you can draw cards prior to your draw phase because mostly you synchro summon the opponent's turn and you, just, and you synchro summon at least one or two Crystron synchros uh, during that turn. So you draw two cards and draw one from a uh, draw phase, that's utterly amazing. However, Crystallic Potential is a strong card but Starlight Junction does way more. It does way more with, with a synchro you summon the opponent's turn by adding a lot more pressure to your opponent which is the main objective of a deck. and. They couldn't give Crystron a um, sp archetype specific Starlight Junction because that would overload the field spell. So the problem with this is that they had to give every Dragon, uh, every Draco Slayer um, plot thing a field spell, but Crystron's field spell was already printed some years ago. So yeah, that's just sad. Crystallic Potential is by no means a bad card, and you can technically take it in once. But I would not recommend using it more than once because, frankly, Starlight Junction is way better. For the traps, it's pretty easily to determine one entry to three impact. Entry is a great card for this level amplification because, well, you can just banish it from a graveyard, dump the South Avenue. Oh yeah, I have another level 5 machine monster. That pretty much sounds like an infinity, right? Now you can also go Zolkin with it, so eh. Uh, yeah, that tree impact is basically a given because you most likely need you mostly need impact for your combos, so that's just obvious right there. And solemns are also a given. You can also n run no solemns, but run two dimensional barriers, which is something I will try out in the future. But I want to get this deck in real life as well, so I don't want to uh, want it to be way too expensive because Omega's already costing me like a lifetime supply of chocolate so I don't want to waste too much on this. For the extra is already uh, also pretty easy to tell. Two Quendex are a given because you always need Quendex for your combos. Two Armatrix is something I actually rarely see but I couldn't live without two. I always make two in with my duels except if they just end too quickly. A Zectron to have a good monster to go into and uh, with Ryan. Black Rose is just too amazing if you summon it in the opponent's turn, so is Moonlight. Aside from that, Omega is the best basically card. It is the single best card. Crystal Wing is getting weaker at the moment outside of Wind Witches, but it still has its uses, so it's in a gate. We can use that. Trishula is just Trishula. Like, if you can go for Trishula, especially in the opponent's turn, which is very much possible with this deck, and one of the reasons why I'm still running one Rosenix. Uh, it will just destroy your opponent. You might have seen that if you're a fan of, of Matt Durant, you might have seen it in his Zodiac Magician thing that I made it. I should have made Gleon Gunner, but I think Gleon Gunner would not have banished his spell on the head, which would have given him more plays. So both plays were actually alright, and it's cool. 
One Gleon Gunder because it's the best Crystron Synchro, one Stardust Warrior, and I think this is something I actually revolutionized, which is the use of both Zulkin and the CDI combo. I actually don't believe that I am the cause of this, but many people just say that I am the reason why they use this, uh, they, that people use both things in Crystron, so I just roll with it. I hope it's not the reason because I am not the revolutionized guy. However, I deal with that because both cards are incredibly amazing and incredibly easy to make in this deck. So they have their... They belong in this deck in some way. A Async I also see a lot of time is Vermilion Dragon Mech and I actually own two of those which is funny because I rarely own any secret rare cards, especially bad ones, but this card is not that bad, you can go into it with C3 plus Moonlight Rose Dragon, however I don't think your space is, uh, you have enough space to actually go into it too often, and your space is way more valuable than that. Like stuff like Stardust Warrior which can actually negate a summon, a, a special summon at that. Like you can just negate a pendulum summon with a monster, which is awesome, especially in this meta. And that's just basically a very great thing. Um, so th this is something you can try to fit in if you want to. However, I would not recommend it, but you can still play it. So that's my thought of a million dragon mate. And now, like, I ha already hear people shouting, "Where is your phoenix?" Let's let's take a look at phoenix. Not nah, wait, Christron phoenix. Phoenixion is a pretty decent card in itself, but the way it is summoned and the way it works and it is set up, it is not a good card. Yes, I, I've said it. I said it, it was not a good card. And I can explain to you why actually. It is a hard back room removal that instantly dies to back row and in a meta where t uh, where solemn strike solemn warning and dimensional barrier are always on the field they can just negate the phoenix and yeah what it is only really good in the first opponent's turn when he cannot just chain it on them so that's a thing but most of the time you just get uh, cucked out of that so i don't really like phoenix i know that D barrier, Solemn Strike, Solemn Warning also work on all the other monsters in my extra deck. But they have another use apart from just banishing all their spells and traps. What I do actually is having my Phoenix in the side deck against stuff like, Bert, like uh, Paleozoic, which will basically be decimated as soon as Zodiac is out. That's why I don't have it in my extra deck right now. And actually, Pendulum matchups. Against the new magicians, I would easily, easily side in my Crystron Phoenix, and that is something you might not, you can keep in mind. That is, you can just side in some disruption synchros that you can use in certain uh, matchups and side out those you cannot use in that matchup. I decided to use the the synchros I can use the uh, I can use at the most opportunities, and Phoenix just does not fit into that. This is my opinion. So Phoenix is in my side deck, and let's and now let's look at what the side deck in this file is like. All right, I am actually out of breath a bit. How long are we already talking? Twenty minutes? Actually, nineteen. This is all right. Let's just take a quick look. We've got a Gen X engine here, which is basically a um, substitute to the Recycler engine if you have too much space, and if you want to run Allure of Darkness, because both. Gofu and Genx controller are dark monsters and Undyne searches of the un controller so you can do stuff with Allure. I personally don't like it because it eats up so much space for so little benefit. But you can not try You can try it, you can just decimate the hand traps for that if you want to. This is your decision, it's your deck in the end so just try it. Then I've got the speed ride combo which basically got power crept by Sal Fafni because you need the red recycler, so yeah. The speedrun engine was better before Sal Fafni was announced and this is kinda interesting because this is a deck which that can potentially use the speedrun engine 
but does not do it because it does not actually b benefit too much from it. It's a very funny case, actually. We've got one mathematician because, well, South Avenue is a level 5 and that's awful for mathematician. However, you can just dump the fist run and search with South Avenue if you want to. I personally don't want to do that. I just put the Phoenix in here right now. Hello? There it is. And yeah. That's just a bit awkward, but it is usable. Then we've got Steam Synchron in combination with Ties of the Brethren, which is of course an easy first turn Trishula and or Glen Gander. Great thing, you can try it. I am not a fan of that, but it's a it's an option I give to you. And also you've got uh, I've got for you Jet Synchron plus uh, Axo Synchron as something you can try out. Because Exosynchron actually increases the amount of plays you can do in this deck and is also a Synchro Monster, a, a Synchro Tuner which can Synchro Summon the opponent's turn. So it actually kind of complements our playstyle. I am not running it because I am taking Quandex as my main base and I don't actually want to cut my armor tricks and I don't want to run more than two level 5 Synchros. But you can of course run it. It's also a machine so any Crystal Monster can get into it. Even Quan with Rosenix. Alright, yeah, even Ryan because, because, well, it's level 5, so Ryan can actually go for a Synchro Tuner, and yeah. This is generally a good thing and it increases the amount of your plays. I personally don't run it because I don't find the space. That's all. And last but not least, I've got Raigeki for low, um, for low tier matchups because, well, it's a great card in the end. So yeah, there you have it. I tried to explain to you my card, my thoughts of this. Uh, the card choices in this deck and I hope you kinda got what I wanted to say. This was really hard for me to do because well I have so much to talk about uh, in this archetype and I can't just um, gather my thoughts right so I just have to spout them out without even without actually planning them out because if I plan it I can just not do it. So I hope you could still enjoy this video if you have any questions regarding the archetype, any questions you want to be answered, please do so. Please ask in the comments. This video will be your Q&A for the Christron archetype. This is my present to you guys, my Christmas present. So please use it. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you will have a wonderful uh, Christmas still. I don't know your time zone, so I hope it's the Christmas for you. And you will have a wonderful new year. This is my last upload for this year, so we will see us again next year in 2017. I hope you enjoyed this year with me. Maybe I make like my uh, like another Christmas video just for you um, for New Year's Eve, but this is not a promise, so please don't expect much. And yeah. This has been Arcatrios for the last video of 2016. I hope you enjoyed this day, uh, this video, and yeah, stay ravened.